Hello everybody, it's Vicious and welcome to a brand new computer software review. Today I'm going to be taking you through a full review of the Wondershare Video Converter Ultimate, which is the piece of software that I have right here in front of me. This was given to me to test, evaluate, and fully review for you, and that was a good idea on their part because I've been making videos and converting videos and testing so many softwares throughout the years that I'm really, really good at this. However, it was a bad idea because I know exactly what to look for and I can be very picky so I've been giving the software a, a full thorough testing and I'm going to first show you guys the basics of it and tell you what I think is really cool about it and show you the features and then kind of sum it up at the end with my thoughts and opinions. So I've already got the software open and this is the interface that you're going to be faced with. You have basically your work area here which is showing you things that you have queued up into the program. And then you have all your selections over here and you can actually have some options on the tracks. We'll walk through it one by one. You can add a file by using the add files interface or you can drag and drop. The drag and drop I used for the second file. This first file is actually a DVD that I have sitting in my computer right now. You see there's a load DVD feature. You can load from one of your drives on your computer or even more amazing. I was really surprised to see that it has the ability to load a DVD folder, an ISO or an IFO file. So if you have something already ripped on your computer, you can convert it using this software, which is something I didn't expect at all. They have the ability to burn things onto a DVD, and you can see that it gives you a DVD menu. So when I say burn it onto a DVD, I don't mean a simple putting the files on a DVD. I mean actually making a DVD that will play on a standard DVD player. So those options are here. Again, choosing your drive, the quality, the aspect ratio, and you can always pull out for more options here. And then download, this program has the ability to add a URL and you can download videos from the internet and it has a built-in plugin if you choose to install it so you can add the download button to your internet browser. So this I would imagine is mostly for YouTube videos but it might work on other sites as well. So we'll go back to the convert site here which is where most of the work is going to happen. On the actual work area here I can choose to edit this and I can add effects and such. I can crop, I can add effects, I can add a watermark, and you can do subtitles. So these are handy features to have that you don't need to have a video editor to implement into the converter, which is really good. Also, if you have multiple audio tracks like this DVD does, you get to choose the audio track that you want to make sure that you include in your conversion, which is also really important because there are several programs that will miss that feature and you'll end up with the wrong audio. The drag and drop I did on this one, let's just see the same options are available to us. This is when I took a tour of my place. And there's only one audio track. Okay, now the conversion part. This is the thing that impressed me the most probably is all the different conversion abilities that this software has. First of all, you'll see that I, my default, what I had selected was MKV. Not many programs support MKV. This is an MKV file and I imported it just fine. So that shows that the program is fully supporting the MKV container, which is awesome. And you have your main categories, video, audio, high definition, web, and 3D. You have also device and device is sweet. This is really epic. If I go to Apple, look at all the different Apple devices that I have available. I use a Galaxy S3 phone. So here you go, you can see that Galaxy S3 is available. If you choose these presets, it automatically knows what your device is capable of supporting and will convert that video for that device. That's one of the most um, recognizable features. Even though a lot of software has it, this one seems to have it more complete and it works really well. I like having this because this is the one thing that I can't really do mentally. Manually converting stuff is knowing what my device will support. So this kind of saves me the hassle. But the standard conversions that I would go do more often are going to be video and high definition because I do stuff for YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and pick the MKV and show you what happens. You choose the preset like this, but then you can go in the settings and you can change things further. High quality, standard, and small size are your quality presets, but you can, of course, go drop down and narrow that down further. So we have resolution, bit rate, the audio encoder, channels, bit rate, and sample rate. I found that if you don't use high definition, if you go to video, you actually have a little bit more control over that. And now I can choose the standard high quality and it has smart fit where it's going to auto detect what it believes is the best, but I can manually choose. So X264 or H264 
resolution I'm going to choose to match my media. The frame rate, again, I'm going to choose to match my media. The bit rate. And then here we go. I can choose AAC instead of what was default on HD, which was AC3. AC3 is standard for you know DVD, Blu-ray stuff. So that's actually why it probably chose that. But I use AAC for anything on the web because it is more compressed and still very high quality. The channels for my audio is two. The sample rate and of course the bit rate. 192 is good. So I can change all those defaults. And when I hit start, the program will start converting it for me to the folder of my choice. It converts very quickly and it uses all of my CPU cores. Right now I have my CPU overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz across all eight cores. So it worked really, really well and it converts things quickly. So I was glad to see that it uses all of my CPU cores. The capability of converting everything like this and having it queued up is great because if I wanted to put 20 things in here then go out to eat I can come back home and have everything done when I get home so that's also a very important process so all in all I think uh, the, the features packed into this are great and I wouldn't actually have expected something this nice up front so I was pleasantly surprised now that I've pointed out all the features let me point out the things that I wished were in here the things that I saw could be better so we're going to go back into the settings again. The first thing I noticed that is that when I choose any kind of setting here, I don't have the ability to match my media. So if I wanted to have it stay at the same frame rate that I imported it at, if I wanted to have it stay at the same resolution, I didn't have that option. Smart fit, I don't think really quite fills that role. I think it chooses the best fit and doesn't actually match your media. If you want the highest quality in the converting, usually you want to match those parameters. And when you import your media on here, it gives you so much information. So you can just match it manually, like I can match my resolution here. And I can uh, look at it, but it doesn't tell me my frame rate, for example, which is very important. And so those features were missing. The other thing I didn't uh, see that I really, really like the way I convert my videos personally is everything here is based on a bitrate conversion. There is using H.264, you have a quality conversion where you choose a quality factor, and that will automatically give you a variable bitrate based around that quality that you choose. I won't blow your mind on that. That'd be a video for another day, but I find that that is my preference for encoding a video. I don't have to worry about the bitrate at all. So if I'm encoding a small file or a large file, my bitrate might be way different between the two, but I want the same quality when I convert them both. So I always use quality. And on my quality settings for YouTube, I usually use a, a quality setting of 20 if you're interested in knowing what I normally use, which is overkill, but I do everything overkill. So that's just the way I am. So those features um, were missing out of here, but I think it would apply to a very, very small percentage of people that would actually need those features as being an easy all-in-one to use video converter, downloader, DVD burner, it's it's got it all, it really does. So what you need to do is if decide for yourself if this feature set is what you need and it looks like a convincing piece of software. I will go ahead and direct you to the website real quick. We can go to Google and type in Wondershare Video Converter. Their website is this one right here, the www.wondershare.com and the product page is Pro Video Converter Ultimate. And you can see here it is endorsed by PC World. CNET has a lot of little features on here for you if you wanna take a closer look. And of course, you have a trial, so you can try it out, which is a great idea. Always try something out first if you can. And then the price of it right now, it is on sale for $59. There might be larger sales to go on in the future, I'm not exactly sure. So. That is going to be the initial review, guys. I think that if you enjoyed the review, then you can let me know in a comment, and I will try to answer any questions you have if I didn't explain something you'd like to know about the software. Overall, again, it was a pleasure to evaluate this software, and I will keep it installed on my computer because it is handy to have around. This was Vicious. I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.